thank you for the opportunity to discuss our work. <laughs> um, thank you for the opportunity to present our work. Um, we're going to be discussing surgical coaching today and the opportunity to potentially improve outcomes for surgical patients. Um, surgical skill has been correlated with patient outcomes after bariatric surgery, um, and surgical skill is largely derived from your training ex and your experience as a practicing surgeon. Typical opportunities for professional development um, are limited and focused primarily on self-study, the use of surgical simulators, and conferences as if we're attending right now. Um, in other disciplines, coaching has been enthusiastically adopted. Um, this model translates well in athletics, musical performance, and business. Um, and while surgery has jumped on the bandwagon, we don't know the best model for delivering this coaching and this um, mechanism of professional development. Surgical coaching aims to provide opportunities for surgeons to improve their technical skills and to refine their surgical decision making without jeopardizing patient care and safety. And although these programs have been adopted very quickly throughout many collaboratives in the US and abroad, um, we've taken a lead from other disciplines and used a lot of the techniques that have worked well in other groups such as business and athletics, um, but we're not sure how that practice translates to technical performance in surgery. So our objective was for this study was to evaluate and characterize the technical content um, between bariatric surgeons and a peer coaching experience. We based our analysis on the coaching intervention implemented by the Michigan Bariatric Surgery Collaborative. As my colleague Dr. Smith discussed, this is a statewide collaborative throughout Michigan that's sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield and the, through the Value Partnership Programs. The MBSC is a unique opportunity for bariatric surgeons throughout the state of Michigan to identify and implement best practices, to learn from their own patient care data, and to learn from one another. The MBSC reaches 40 hospitals and over 70 bariatric surgeons throughout the state of Michigan. The MBSC partnered with the Wisconsin Surgical Coaching Program to provide a peer coaching experience. The peer surgeons were selected based on their favorable outcomes to serve as coaches, and surgeons with lower performing outcomes in terms of patient care were selected for coaches in this exercise. We used a qualitative analysis mechanism for this, for this study. We analyzed 10 transcripts of 20 coaching conversations between peer surgeons in October of 2015. The conversations were recorded while the coaches and coaches discussed video performance of procedures. We then used a qualitative analysis of de-identified transcripts of these coaching experiences to identify emerging themes and to highlight what the coaches and coaches are actually discussing. Both my co-author and I independently evaluated each of the transcripts and reconciled any discrepancies with the input of another author. In our analysis, three major themes were identified, and these were domains of technical performance. So first, the setup of a bariatric procedure, second, device selection, and third, team members and roles. I'll now present the findings of each of these uh, themes with representative quotes. For theme one, we found that the bariatric surgeons in this exercise often describe their optimal setup, specifically how they would modify their, their preferences and their technique based on the patient-specific factors, their positioning, and retraction that they felt was necessary. So for example, in this first setting, this is a setup. So incisions are based off of body habitus, and the coach and coachee would often go back and forth about the nuances of their preferences, why they think it makes a difference, and what they thought they would gain from that. Further, a lot of the time, the coaches and coaches described where they were in terms of their career, how they've modified things since their training, what their partners do, what their mentors did in their training programs. Second, the bariatric surgeons often talked about their devices. I don't think this is a surprise to anyone in minimally invasive surgery, where instrument, energy devices, and stapler preferences can make a huge difference in the performance of a procedure. These, per these participants described case-specific instrument preferences, modifications to their instrument choices based on patient factors or procedure factors, and their justification for the adoption of new technology and implementation of new techniques. So here, our coach and coachee describe why they want a harmonic, what it means to them, and versus a thunder beat. I like it because it's hemostatic, they said. It's a harmonic plus a ligature. They go back and forth using um, surgical technique to justify why they would adopt a new device or selection. Next, they justify why they use energy devices. As we've heard in other presentations today, these are more expensive than standard equipment. So why did they make that decision to implement something like a harmonic dissector when they could have just used a pair of scissors? So these issues were very specific to the laparoscopic cases at hand. And finally, another unique aspect of laparoscopic surgery is the critical dependence on your team members. And we found that our bariatric surgeons participating in this exercise really emphasized this theme. They talked often about having dedicated assistants, PAs or NPs who work with them daily, residents and medical student learners impact on the performance of the procedure, and the value of a consistent team. The first example here describes having a dedicated assistant. They know where I'm going or where I wanna go next. 
having a dedicated team member was a theme that came up often in these conversations about how it can best allow a surgeon to perform the procedure and to help them with their setup and completing a procedure in an efficient and safe way. Next, another major theme was describing how you best use learners and how you don't allow them to detract from the case at hand, provide them the optimal learning experience, and maintain a high level of care for your patients. So a lot of the setup that was discussed was how to best equip a resident to do the portions of the procedure they're capable of. So here they describe, I designed this based on having the resident do the easy part. And then they go on to justify why, not the more risky parts of the procedure, compared to the patient's level and the resident level. And next we talk about how they have the pretty much same crew, so procedures go a lot smoother when you have the same team together. These were some of the representative quotes that describe what is important to bariatric surgeons in these coaching conversations. We use this qualitative analysis to understand what might be important in the implementation and design of future coaching programs specifically for bariatric surgeons. This is a unique opportunity because bariatric surgery is a highly routinized procedure done by surgeons who are highly specialized in the field. So we can really harvest their knowledge to understand how to best implement coaching programs in minimally invasive surgery and in other divisions and, and um, specialties. So our analysis demonstrates that coaching for bariatric surgeons specifically needs to emphasize setup, device selection and use, and team members. And thank you, I'm happy to take any questions.